So, hello everyone. Um, welcome to a little update on what's happening in, around, in and around the um, validation story, uh, which was uh, another TDF tender uh, that CRB was, uh, was doing. Um, yeah. Let's see if uh, more people are coming here. So my name is Thorsten Behrens. I'm happily working for CIB. And um, I'll present standing in for, uh, for my, one of my colleagues, Vasily Melenchuk, who did most of that work um, about the, the progress there. It's not quite done yet. There's smaller bits and pieces missing. But um, hopefully, I can show you at least the, the big picture and give you some demo how that works. So the story behind that um, started with uh, Marcus Morhat with Moggy, <coughs> who um, in uh, March 2014, so that's like more than two years ago, hacked up some validation um, add-on add to unit tests. So uh, throughout the, to give you a little bit of motivation here, I mean, most of you, I think, will know what I'm talking about, but just to um, outline this a little bit more for the perhaps video audience. Um, the um, LibreOffice has tons of unit tests um, growing. Some of them are writing files. Um, and those files <coughs> um, can, of course, be post-processed. And Mogi came up with the idea to run um, validators on them so that um, a unit test would break if a file would be not valid ODF or not valid OXML. Um, after that was running, um, he had another side project of his own, which was uh, crash testing. That's a massive set of documents um, loaded um, and saved again um, on a host on a regular basis. Um, and um, for that, of course, it will also be interesting um, that the files that LibreOffice is writing, which is vastly more than that's happening during the unit test, would also be valid. Um, right, so um, once that was going, um, well, it was a bit of a special setup, so you had to, you had to download and compile and deploy um, um, those validators, and then you had to set the path, and it, that was a bit of setup work. Um, so the EC um, last year decided, uh, among a number of other projects, that that would be worth funding to improve the developer experience here with a goal to, um, to make this validation um, de the default. So that it wouldn't be a, an opt-in opt feature, that, but it would be running um, with every build for every developer who would be running unit tests. <clears throat> and um, CIB started with that. In June, so that's the two guys um, who are behind that. It's uh, Marcus with a uh, fuzzy picture from Hamburg, and Vasily, that's also from from a Hamburg Hackfest. Um, okay, so the goals make export validation default for almost all formats, at least for ODF and OXML. Uh, there's another validator, BFF validator, for the Microsoft binary formats. Um, so that is still optional because that's a bit of a nuisance and it doesn't work on Mac, but it works on Windows and it works on Linux when you have Wine installed. Um, secondly, the um, developer experience um, was, was to be improved. That includes a number of things. First and foremost, that you shouldn't do anything extra um, when, you, when you build LibreOffice. It should just work. Um, and the third goal, um, at least that's my hidden agenda, is to improve uh, ODFTC and LibreOffice development cooperation so it would be easier both for people on the TC to get new features in a form that are sub submittable at, at the TC and also perhaps for the TC to check uh, what the heck is LibreOffice doing there and, and why. So um, 
yeah, export validation default. Um, as I said, that's the case already in master for ODF and OXML. Um, the MS binary um, validator, that's, we can't really distribute that. And uh, the download URL is changing, so it's hard to automate. And it requires wine in a certain version. And all of that together makes it a bit uh, of a nuisance. Since, uh, and since this was all about uh, developer experience, we decided not to enable that. Um, but you can, um, if you add, I will get to that with um, BFF validator and then the path, and we'll pick that up and run that. Hello? There's a lag. <laughs> okay, develop experience. Um, yeah, no extra steps. So you just um, call um, autogen and then you call make and it works. Um, and also error reporting. So when, when those validators say not valid, uh, you probably want to know what is the problem and not that there is a problem, but also where it is and um, maybe not how to fix it, uh, that should be hopefully obvious, but at least some more, at least the line and the column number, ideally also something that, that modern C, C++ compilers do, which is just part of the input and then some pointer, like there's the problem. Um, and also instant feedback, so if you commit or if you change something and then you run a test, which you should use all the time, um, then it should break immediately and not just on Jenkins or, I don't know, a week later on a Tinderbox. Um, and fourth, um, true, true bisectabilities. So if something breaks and um, you discover that later and if you add a test, then you really want to be able to bisect it down to one commit. Um, the problem with the solution before was that it was relying on um, external out of three uh, versions of validators. So that would mean that you would need some way to, to switch validators and schema files. So the, um, the goal was really to have everything that would affect um, validity of a document in tree, like in the core repo. Hmm. Someone needs to bug fix this. That looks like the right one. Okay, um, yeah, TC um, and development. So there's um, two people, I think, three people from the from the project on the TC. Uh, Regina, Michael, no, four. Regina, Andras, Michael, and yours truly. Um, <clears throat> um, and well, so it's been, in the past, usually that, that it was kind of, people had to invest time and effort to extract or to, to set up or to write schema changes, to write pros, and then like go and take that to the TC. So there, there was um, usually nothing immediately useful that we could use. And at least now it should be possible that um, the schema updates, the schema changes should be a side effect of um, developing LibreOffice when you when you touch formats. Um, yes, and the other way around also, um, and we, we committed to do that, is to provide um, updated schema. So right now ODF 1.3 is in the making, and there's some kind of hidden repository at the uh, at Oasis. Um, and there, there's several branches, and there's schema changes and pros changes, and um, kind of distilling that out and providing uh, um, the, the current development version of uh, LibreOffice uh, <laughs> Open Document Format uh, 1.3 um, in in the in a way that a LibreOffice developer could consume that, um, that that would also be nice. So that if there's a problem. LibreOffice would know early on, and vice versa. Yeah. 
who, who wrote that? <laughs> um, okay, so hopefully that slide stays now. Uh, yeah. Okay, so as the set setup is really autogen, SH, and make. Um, uh -huh. So what, what happens is um, that the, um, um, the previously uh, you had to you had to check out two repositories, ODF Toolkit and Office Ultron, and then you had to that was both are Java, so you had to install some Java build nonsense, and then you had to build that, then you had to stick that into your path, um, but not the, the the jar file, but some script that was kind of calling Java with jar and a kiloton of arguments. <clears throat> um, and what happens now uh, is that our pre-built versions of that, um, really didn't like that at all, but well, it's just for the testing, it's not really uh, shipped anywhere. Um, then are pulled from um, dev www um, and um, put into the, um, into the download, like where, where all the other tarballs end up. Um, and are used from there. And it should be reasonably seldom that those need updates because all the schema, um, all the relevant schema files are now in the, in the core repo. <clears throat> so there will be the occasional update for, for whatever reason. Someone discovers a bug in the, um, not in the schema, but in the extra schema validation that would need, still need to be changed in the, in the, um, um, out of tree repos, but beyond that, it should just work. Hmm. I think I'm gonna fail to switch slides profoundly. Okay, um, BFF validator, that's a bit more involved, um, and that's why it's not the default. Um, so, uh, well, you have to install Wine, um, depending on your, or well, if you're in a Windows, then you don't have to install Wine. Well, you can, but it wouldn't make a difference. Um, on the Linux, you install Wine. On the Mac, I haven't tried it. Perhaps it works, perhaps it doesn't. Um, but it's not the default anyway, and I don't think we have very many developers who run Mac as their main platform. Hands up, Luis. Tor, no? Okay, so it wouldn't matter anyway, I suppose. <clears throat> Since, uh, well, it, it really only matters if this is your primary platform, and if it's not your primary platform, then, then why would you care? Because you're hopefully running unit tests anyway, and it would never hit, uh, um, uh, master as it is. So, right, and then you pull the installer from Microsoft and then you extract it and then you MSI exit it, exec it, and then it's installed uh, in your home directory or wherever your, your .wine gear is. And then you can run configure with this dash dash, dash with a BFF validator with the path to that and it will run it just the same um, for uh, a set of um, extensions, file format extensions that are Microsoft binary files. Uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> we had to disable chart and writer validation because um, BFF validator said, mm, no, ain't valid. Um, and it's kind of a pain in the rear because BFF validator, we can't change error reporting there because it's closed source. And the error reporting basically says, chunk something, there's a problem, and then some error message that you have to Google for and chunk something is also not really translating into at least nothing that, that I would be immediately able to use. And what's worse is that it only reports one error. So if, so if there are, I don't know, 20 errors, you have to fix it one by one, and you never know if you're done uh, tonight or if you're done next year. Um, there's something perhaps that can, could be done about that. Uh, I will get to that later. No, well, maybe this is repaint problems. Is that possible? Because of this really wonderful NVIDIA Optimus. All 
Okay, so that's the slide I wanted. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> okay, um, yeah, I said most of what's on this slide. Um, there's been quite some cleanup and consolidation going on, um, especially for, for the baseline requirements. So it turned out, and that was the tinderboxes in the end that told us that, um, that there's a, a number of um, build systems out there that only have Java 1.6. And at least um, um, Office of Tron, you know, it was only a validator, wanted 1.7 um, because of one, um, one dependency. So that was breaking, and so we, we consolidated that and fixed it and, and inserted this uh, target version um, uh, all over the place. We added uh, better error reporting, at least to the um, ODF validator. <clears throat> so that would now output a part of the input and some ASCII pointer to um, where the error happened. I will show that in a moment. Uh, we um, just, I mean, we're used to that, so we just forked the ODF Toolkit project um, for having some fixes there, but um, uh, I told Swante and he, I think, reasonably happily took most of the, the changes there. <clears throat> OXML error reporting uh, still well, it's not bad. It tells you column, line, and column, but it could be improved a bit more. So, yeah. This is irritating. So, demo time. Um, let me try if that works. So, um, what I will show now is the... That's the state. I don't know. Is that visible? Hopefully. If not, just come to the front. There's lots of. Uh, yeah, but I can perhaps just increase the font size a bit. Better. So um, this is. Um, this is ODF validator, and what it's doing, it is here. Calling the, um, the current version that's on dev www. That has still old schema files, like the one, like the standard ODF 1 or 2 standardized rubber stamp versions. And I let that run um, over with extended conformance um, on this very keynote um, that I was giving on Wednesday. So I did run, and it's kind of uh, very unhappy because there's this um, dreaded draw fit to size, uh, which is um, invalid ODF. <coughs> um, yeah, that's a shame. So um, what do we do about that? Either we, we fix the code. I mean, maybe that was, we didn't know about that, what we were doing there, and we just revert that and find another way or put it into another namespace. Um, or what we can do is change the schema. Um, so that's the... That's the relevant part here Then the ODF 1, the 2 schema. So that says draw fit to size, it's supposed to be Boolean. Um, and what, you, what, what LibreOffice is doing since the dawn of time is writing some more values. It's true, false, shrink to fit, and all. So with that schema, we let it run. Uh, it's now using um, the, uh, the, the, the trunk of um, ODF validator as it is in the, um, in the forked repo, which can load schema files um, from the command line, so we can overwrite what's built in. So we run it again, um, and it's much less errors, and you see that there's some uh, nice, um, like, 
part of the input and this pointer, then it says uh, uh, attribute office version has a bad value. So it's apparently unhappy about the 102 here because it's a 103 schema. Um, right. So yes, and you can do that. Um, so this is one of the, the more annoying problems because it's um, it's even under extended conformance. It's uh, it's invalid. So we need to do about something about it. Either um, make sure that it's um, in ODF 1.3 or um, put it into a um, into an, an extension namespace. Um, but what you can see is that um, it would um, be reasonably easy once you perhaps watch this talk um, to make sure that whatever you, you do, whatever, however you tamper with the, um, with the ODF import and export, that what, what is written is, is valid. And if it's for some reason not valid, then you can change the schema and people can monitor the schema changes reasonably easily um, because it's just one place to watch and not, I don't know, six million lines of code to watch for, for changes. And then it can be discussed if it's a problem or not. And, and yeah, the same is true for the, for the TC changes that can very easily be brought back into, um, into the core repo. Mm. Another thing that could be done is to, um, to at least clo um, around uh, ODF updates to say, oh, let's maybe go for strict conformance, which means no extensions. Um, what also can be done is that uh, we have various um, format export settings, 1.2 one, one uh, strict, 1.0 slash 1.1. So those could be checked against the um, suitable schema files that are also in the, um, in the tree now. The same is true for OXML. Um, there the schema already, the schemas already have extensions. Mogi and I think Bubli added, fixed a few bugs there or added some, some missing pieces. Um, and in principle, the same is true there. So if, if LibreOffice finds problems with the schemas, we could um, report that to ISO um, as they maintain those. Um, shall we look in time wise? <clears throat> so, right. Um, then let's go back to the slides. No, not something yet. Okay. Um, I was mentioning a few things already that, that could be done uh, going forward. Um, clearly, what's, what's missing from, from the tender is integration with uh, crash testing, uh, so that um, what, what's happening here is also running um, with a tra crash test that needs a bit of tweaking there with the a, with a external scripts. Um, I mentioned the strict validation, um, which is quite helpful because with that, uh, even extended or, or private namespaces would cause um, validation to fail. Um, so if at some point in time we would have all the changes that, um, that, we, that we did upstream to Oasis and it would be a standard or a draft standard, you could say, okay, from now on, we switch on strict. Um, and then um, if someone really, really, really needs another extension, then we would need to have a 1.3 extended. And then someone would need to add that to the tools option. So it's, it's a nice way to kind of notice when that happens and make people aware of that they need to do something. Um, I was referring to that earlier. So this whole binary out of time. Are oh, you serious? There's five minutes left. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> sorry, I will, I will hurry up. So um, binary formats. So there's a wonderful project called Bin Schema from Just Fun and Over, uh, which is um, a um, XML description of the binary formats, which are reasonably structured with this um, uh, OLE funny file format, um, and there's already for the three major. Uh, office formats, there's already schemas there. So we could use that. 
And perhaps it gives us better debuggability because if we run it, then we get pointed to, oh, this schema line such and such is violated here, and it might be easier to then go back to the code and find the place that's writing that. Um, and another nice thing is that maybe we do not want to tamper with a standardized rubber stamped all wonderful, uh, never change them, ODF 1 to 2 uh, versions. And if we don't, we can um, uh, use schema includes. So we can have uh, LibreOffice Libre Office extended, and that includes the 1 to 2. And in this LibreOffice extended schema, which is just an include statement, and then lists those five um, additions or overrides that we have, and will be even more obvious. I mean, it's obvious enough if you know how to parse Git history, but now you can just have this one file and, and, and send it to Oasis and say, well, we need this kind of, or we would like to have to standardize. Okay, that's the end of time or more than that. Um, thanks for your attention. Thanks so much, uh, TDF, for sponsoring that. Um, Thanks to all the donors um, that made that possible. Um, I love you. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Any questions? Okay, so everyone's happy. Great. Then I'm <laughs> happy as well. Is there a validator for RTF? Because we do RTF export too. <laughs> you said that you have validated for all export formats. I wouldn't rule that out. It's probably, there's probably something. I don't know if it's open source, but it w I would be surprised if there ain't. It's a rather structured format, but I'm, I haven't, honestly, I haven't looked into that. Okay. Any questions? Any other question? No. Thank you. Great.